Krishna Pristai Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Dinamani, Namaste Sarasati Gauravani Pracharini, Nirvise Sashunyavani Paschachade Shatani, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudiraya Nastakayashu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So I'm told you're speaking on the prayers of the doer. And then? Uh, Akrura. Akrura. Oh, Akrura's prayers, right, sorry. Akrura's prayers. It's chapter number 40. Hmm. Right? 38. Oh, 38. Akrura's arrival in Vrindavan. You want me to cover just one chapter or the. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, there are actually three chapters there concerning Akrura. We have Akrura's arrival in Vrindavan. And then 
and you have a Krura leaving, taking Krishna and Balaram away from Vrindavan. And then you have the, the prayers offered by Vidura, uh, Akrura rather, mix up. Akrura's prayers when they, uh, when, when he sees uh, the spiritual world. So the arrival of Krishna, uh, the arrival of Akrura in Vrindavan takes place at the request of Kamsa, our good friend Kamsa, right? <laughs> Everyone loves Kamsa. Krishna and Balaram were known to be expert also in wrestling. They'd wrestle with the cowherd boys. And so Kamsa was arranging a wrestling match for them. And at the same time, Kamsa had other events also arranged. There was going to be the elephant, Nkova Yapila, who was a, a particularly ferocious and nasty elephant. And the trainer was instructed that with Kubala Pida, they should kill Krishna and Balaram before they even entered the wrestling arena. So Kamsa was planning like this. And then he said, then, we all, then I'm also going to kill Vasudev. And, and because Vasudev has uh, cheated me and I'm going to kill anybody else who opposes my rule. Like this, Kamsa was arranging everything for his uh, rule over the kingdom. Of course, he was particularly concerned about Krishna because at the time of the marriage of Devaki with Vasudev, at that time there had been a prophecy that the eighth child of this girl is going to kill you. And so at that time, Kamsa was ready to kill Devaki, but by the political maneuvering of Vasudev, it was agreed that they would give the children, one after any child born to the couple, would be given to Kamsa. And so by Vasudev's political uh, maneuvering with Kamsa, Kamsa agreed he spared the life of Devaki. But then he put them in prison, and one after another, when the children were born, Kamsa killed them very cruelly. So now Kamsa, he had been trying to kill Krishna. He'd sent his different demon friends there, all around Braja, 
trying to kill Krishna and Balaram. But instead, one after another, Kamsa's different friends had all been killed. Putana and Trinavarta and Baka and Aga, one after another, they'd all been killed by Lord Krishna. So then Kamsa is getting anxious about his own situation. So he arranged for this wrestling match to take place at Mathura. And he wants, he asks Akrura that you should go there and bring them. Akrura, now Akrura is a devotee. He's actually, and he actually understands that Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are divine personalities. So he's actually very pleased to get this opportunity to go there to Vrindavan. It's a great honor for him. Not because he wants to serve Kamsa, but because he, he wants to get the blessings. He wants to fall at the dust. In the, he wants to fall at the feet of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. He wants that opportunity. He's very eager for that. So Kamsa tells him, I have a new chariot for you, all specially prepared for you to go to Vrindavan to bring the two boys. It should be a new chariot. You're not going to bring Krishna on some old chariot. <laughs> One time, uh, Prabhupada came in Hong Kong, and the devotee there, at that, at that time it was... Uh, um, his grace, Barijan Prabhu, Barijan Prabhu, very scholarly, very senior devotee. So he was preaching in Hong Kong in the early 1970s. Um, so he'd arranged for a Rolls Royce to pick up Prabhupada. So it attracted the attention of the newspaper reporters. And the Swamiji is coming in the Rolls Royce, and he was also given the penthouse suite in a nice hotel. Both the car and the penthouse suite hotel were the property of an Indian man and one of the life members, supporters there in Hong Kong. And so it was all given, it was all donated by this, by the generosity of this one man. Uh, it was a named Hari Lila, he's passed away now, but famous, they were a famous family in Prabhupada's time in Hong Kong. He owned a big holiday inn hotel and he had a Rolls Royce. And because Bari Chan and his wife had been preaching to their children, to the children from the family, and so the, the family were very favorable to Krishna consciousness. So they gave the Rolls Royce to go and pick up Prabhupada and they arranged Prabhupada in a penthouse suite in the hotel. So the reporters all came and they they said to Prabhupada, they said, oh, you're, you're a Swamiji and you're coming in the big car and you're living in this penthouse suite. And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, if I was under a tree, you would not come to see me. <laughs> <laughs> and another occasion when it was remarked that Srila Prabhupada had been received in a big car, Prabhupada said, actually, he said, actually, he said, the, the spiritual master is the representative of the personality of Godhead. And actually, you want to receive him, you should have a, it should be a chariot of gold. <laughs> That said, anyway, whatever you offer, I am I'm accepting. <laughs> <laughs> so, like this, uh, Prabhupada was enlightening them. So, Lord Krishna,
symbols which are there on the lotus feet of the Lord. Symbols such as the uh, thunderbolt and the uh, gold which is used to control the elephant and the lotus flower and fish. These different symbols are all there. They're all auspicious markings on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So when Akrura sees these footprints in the dust, then he comes off the chariot and he rolls in the dust. He took that dust all over his body. And Srila Prabhupada tells us that when we enter Vrindavan, we should enter in this mood of Akrura, coming into the holy land of Vrindavan. It's not just simply purchasing a ticket, but we have to actually enter with the proper mental attitude. And then this mental attitude is best understood by how Akrura enters Vrindavan how he is absorbed in thinking of his good fortune, that he's going to directly see the personality of Godhead. In this way, Akrura takes the dust all over his body and then proceeds into Vraja, and then he sees Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram ahead. They're milking the cow. They're going, or they're going to milk the cows. In, in the evening, when Akrura reached Vrindavan, and Akrura, Akrura is there just in time, the cows have come back from the forest, and Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are just preparing to milk the cows when Akrura appears. And Krishna and Balaram receive Akrura. Of course, Akrura offers his obeisances to Krishna and Balaram, and Krishna, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram welcome Akrura into Vrindavan, and they're happy to see him, and they take him to their home. They take him to their home, and he, they give him some nice foodstuffs, which have been prepared by Mother Yashoda. And Akrura is able to relax after his journey. And then Lord Krishna inquires from Akrura about why have you come? What's the purpose of your visit? And at that time, then Akrura explains to Lord Krishna that King Kamsa has invited you to come to Mathura and he's arranging this wrestling match. And when Lord Krishna hears, then Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they laugh. They're, they're not in any anxiety or worried about anything. When they hear about Kamsa, and they know what Kamsa is like, and they know his, he must have some evil intentions. He's already committed so many atrocities, killing the children of Vasudeva and Devaki. And they've also seen the different demons who came there to Braja, and they can understand that these demons also are connected to King Kamsa. At any rate, Lord Krishna informs Nanda Maharaj that we're all invited to Mathura. So then Nanda Maharaj tells all the other men and all the cowherd men in Braja that you should prepare some goods. And when we go to Mathura, we can be give offerings to King Kamsa. That's how they would pay their taxes. <laughs> they didn't have rupees or anything, you know. They just give some butter or some milk or some yogurt or cheese, whatever. And in this way, they satisfy 
King Kamsa. So all the cowherd men, they go, they're getting, they're, they're prepare themselves to go to Mathura. But the gopis are not going to come. This time, anyway, the cowherd men are going, cowherd boys are going, but the gopis, they have to stay back. They have to take care of the cows and take care of their children, do all the things which the women have to do during the day, right? The ladies know so many duties are there. But this, for this wrestling match, the cowherd men are going to go. Later on, the gopis will get the chance to go and meet Krishna. That comes at Kurukshetra. When Krishna comes to Kurukshetra, after a long time, after Krishna had gone to Dwarka and married and everything, then he came back to Kurukshetra. So at that time, he sent a letter to Vrindavan and he told all the, the gopis that you come to Kurukshetra. He said, last time when I went to Mathura, you didn't get to come. All the cowherd boys came with me that time. So this time it's your turn and the cowherd boys can stay back. Let the cowherd boys stay back and take care of the cows and the gopis can come to Kurukshetra. And so they get their turn to meet for the Lord Krishna. But for the gopis, it's very painful the thought of being separate from Lord Krishna, that Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are both going to go to Mathura, and all Nanda Maharaj is also going to go there, the coward men, they're all going. The gopis, they cannot believe it. How will we ever live without seeing Lord Krishna? It's unbearable for us. The thought of Krishna departing from Vrindavan. So, this, of course, is a very uh, common scene which is often depicted. Artists and so on, they like to draw this, uh, the scenes of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram on their chariot and going out of Vrindavan. And the gopis are trying to stop Krishna. They're trying to hold back the chariot. They don't want the chariot to go. They don't think, why? No, Krishna, just stay here. Don't go there. You stay with us. But Lord Krishna has to go. He has his mission to fulfill. We know from the Bhagavad Gita, the purpose of the Lord's appearance in this world. Paritranaya sadhunam vinas chaya chaduskritam. So Lord Krishna has to go to Mathura in order to relieve the earth of the burden of demons like Kamsa. But it was not an easy thing. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram both leaving the gopis. And the gopis are just un unbearably painful for them. The past, this pastime of Krishna leaving Vrindavan, in Chaitanya Lila, there's a parallel pastime. And that pastime is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taking sannyas. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Katwa, at that time, he was initiated by Keshava Bharati into sannyas. So that was it. Was a very painful ceremony. Lord Chaitanya, no, we think you know someone's taking sannyas. We think it's very good, you know, very nice. But actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taking sannyas, it was very painful because. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord, and the thought of him renouncing is not pleasing to the devotees. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord as a young man, 
He, at, he took sannyas at the age of 24. And he was a young man, he had beautiful long hair, and it was all to be shaven off. So he was going to, and instead of wearing beautiful clothes as a young man, as a Gatrihasta, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would dress very nicely, but he's accepting the renounced order of life. So he's going to accept very simple, plain cloth of the renounced order. So it was very painful. And the, the, the most painful thing was that because he's taking sannyas, he's going to leave home. And then they thought, we will not be able to see the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu anymore. Because he's taking sannyas, he can't go home because he has his young wife there, so he can't go back to see the wife. So the thought of him leaving all the devotees was very painful to them. And similarly, Lord Krishna leaving Vrindavan was very painful because the gopis had been enjoying wonderful pastimes, just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been enjoying wonderful pastimes with all the devotees. Every evening they were doing uh, kirtan in the home of Srivas Thakur. The whole night they were having this nocturnal kirtan at Srivas Angam. And similarly, the gopis, they were accustomed to enjoying every night in rasa dance with Lord Krishna, but Lord Krishna's leaving. The gopis used to, they treasured every second seeing Krishna. They would watch him every day go, going into the forest of Vrindavan, herding the cows, and they would wait anxiously for him to come back in the evening. And in the evening, when he would return from the forest, it would be a festival as he would hear Krishna playing the flute and coming with all the cows. All the gopis would assemble and it would be like a festival as he saw Krishna come back again in the evening. And then in the night, they would go into the forest and they'd have rasa dance. But now Krishna, Lord Krishna is going to leave, he's going to leave Vrindavan and that is very painful for the gopis. So they come there and they watch Krishna get on his chariot. And one of the things which happened was that Akrura, Akrura who's the one taking him away, he didn't even offer any solace to the gopis. The gopis, they said, this man, his name is wrong because cruel, akrura means one who is not cruel. But this person is very cruel. He's the most cruel person. He's taking Krishna away from us. So they thought this, they were not happy with akrura. And he didn't even comfort them. Don't, he, he should have at least told, don't worry, I'll bring him back very soon, don't worry. But he didn't say anything. And so later on, you see that there was some problem for Akrura. And later on, he had to leave Dwarka. And he had to go and reside in Benares. Oh, my God. Benares is not a place for the devotees. <laughs> Devotees of Krishna, we don't much care for Benares. It's more for the Shivites or the Buddhists. But that's what happened to Akshura. So uh, the gopis assemble to watch Lord Krishna's departure. And they're watching and they see the chariot go off. And it goes off into the, into the dusk. The, the, the gopis are watching for some time they followed but then 
they could no longer keep following, they had to stop. And they saw Krishna's chariot go forward and they watched. At one point, they could only see the flag on the top of the chariot. And then they could only see the dust. And then they could not see anything. But still, they were just standing there. They stood just like they were, they were figures in a picture. Just like you can see this, this picture of Lord Chaitanya carrying Haridas Thakur and the devotees. They're not moving. Although, they're, although they, they appear to be dancing, they're not actually moving. So figures in a picture, they don't move. So that when Krishna left Vrindavan, the gopis were standing like that. They were just like figures in a picture. They didn't move. They were just stunned into silence. They didn't speak to each other. They were just stunned. Krishna had been watching them and he'd been trying to make signs to them as he was leaving. He said, don't like that, you know, don't worry, don't worry. I, I'm coming back soon. He would tell them like that. He told them, I'm, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. He just wanted to comfort the gopis, to give solace to them. Because he understood how much love they had for him. And so he, he reciprocated with them. So in this way, Lord Krishna departed from Vrindavan. And then they came past the Yamuna River at one point, and Krishna and Balaram stopped the chariot, and they went to drink some water. Dusty, you know, Vrindavan's always dusty, dry place, you know, a lot of dust. And so they stopped to drink some water. And then Akrura also, he, after the Krishna and Balaram went to drink, to drink water, they came back. And then Akrura said, I will just go for a minute. I will just take a bath quickly. And Akrura went, entered into the water. But when he entered into the water, he was surprised because he saw Krishna and Balaram there. And he was surprised. He thought, well, just a minute. They were on the chariot a minute ago. So he thought, maybe I'm illusioned. And so he went back to the chariot. And when he went back to the chariot, he saw Krishna and Balaram were there on the chariot. So he went back to the Yamuna again. And this time, he didn't see Krishna and Balaram. What? But what he did see was Anantashesha was laying there. And on top of Anantashesha was laying the personality of Godhead. With a thousand heads and a thousand arms, like must have been, we could say, the Mahapurush was laying there on top of Anantashesha. And they were surrounded by all of their intimate associates, like Nanda, and Sunanda, and the Kumaras were there, and the, the great Brahmanas, and then also great demigods like Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, they were all there, and they were all offering their different individual prayers to the Supreme Lord. And so Akrura saw the Lord in this situation. He was, he was very happy, of course, it was very wonderful for him to see that. It was very wonderful. Akrura then, he also, he offers his prayers. And uh, seeing the Supreme Lord, he begins to glorify the Lord by speaking about how the Lord is the origin of everything, all of the different elements of creation, they all come from him. 
And actually, Brahma, Lord Brahma, is also the creation of the Supreme Lord, that he takes his birth from the lotus flower, which comes from the navel of the Lord. And that everything is ultimately coming from the Supreme Lord. And Lord Brahma, although he, we consider him to be something of a creator, he is actually only doing a part, the secondary part of the creation. He's the engineer, right? Maybe some of you are also engineers, right? Engineers, what do engineers do? We don't create any, you don't create anything. You just take the pieces and put them together, right? You get all the parts and put them together. So, Brahma's like that. All the parts, where do they all come from? They're from the primary creator, the original creator is the personality of Godhead. So Akrura begins offering his prayers in this way, describing how the Lord is the cause of all creation and everything comes from him. And Lord Brahma can only understand the Lord if he is Krishna conscious. If Brahma himself is not Krishna conscious, even though he is the most intelligent being, he will not be able to understand Lord Krishna. He will not be able to understand the personality of Godhead. The Lord cannot be understood by the material senses. So in this way, uh, Akrura begins to offer his prayers and then he goes on to describe how everything in the universe is a part of the body of the Lord. From the Vishwarup, the universal form, that the, the hair on the body of the Lord are like the trees and plants. And the hair on the head of the Lord are like clouds in the sky. The rivers are like veins on the body of the Lord. Uh, the upper planets is the head. The earthly planets is his chest. And the lower planets are his feet. Different parts of the universe are all understood in relation to the body of the Supreme Lord. The rain is like the semen of the Lord. And the Lord himself, he is able to procreate everything by his senses, just simply by his own power. All of the different living entities all have some place there in the body of the Lord. The Brahmanas are like the head, the Kshatriyas, the arms, the Vaishya, the belly, the Sudra, the legs. So each and everything was, is there within the body of the Lord. Then Akrura goes on to describe how the Lord appears in so many different forms. And he mentions the different avatars which are described there in Jayadeva Goswami's Dasa avatars in Gita Govinda. And he mentions how the Lord appears in all of these different forms. He adds one more who wasn't mentioned by Jayadeva. He adds uh, Haigriva. It says, Hai Griva killed the demons, Kaitava and Madhu, huh? Madhu and Kaitava. Yeah, they were killed by Hai Griva, the Lord in the form of Hai Griva. And all of these different incarnations like Matsya and Kurma and Nishringa, these are all different forms which the Lord assumes for his enjoyment, for his pastimes. As a Lord Varaha, he can pick up the earth from the bottom of the universe. And his kurma, 
he held, he holds the Mandaratala mountain on his back. So the demigods and the demons can churn the ocean of the, the ocean of milk. The Lord is assuming many different forms. Is it Lord Rama who comes to kill the demon Ravan? And is Lord Krishna he comes uh, to display also the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he also expands himself. It's a Chaturvyuha, Aniruddha, Prajumna, Vasudev, Sankarshan. These are all <coughs> expansions of the Lord. Then Akrura goes on to describe how different people worship the Lord in different ways. For example, some people worship the Lord some people are, they want to worship Lord Shiva, and they will worship Lord Shiva in their appropriate way. Other people like the Brahmanas, they will worship the Lord by following the Pancharatriki system of worship. And other people, they will simply worship the impersonal, unmanifested aspect of the Lord. Many different people are all worshipping, but they're worshipping the Lord in different ways. But Akrura goes on to say, ultimately, all of these different methods, they all become one. He said, and he gives the example, he said, just like the water comes down the mountains in the form of rivers, and the rivers all flow to the sea. So ultimately, it all comes into the ocean. And he says in the same way, different people who are worshipping the Lord in all of these different ways, ultimately, it all merges, it all becomes one and enters into the ocean. Of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has described that uh, this is Abhidipu, there's Abhidipurvakam. They worship him, but they do so in the wrong way. <laughs> so even they're doing it in the wrong way, it's better than not doing it. They're doing something, and gradually one day they will learn what is the proper way. They, need, they just need that guidance. So in this way, Akrura is glorifying the Lord in, with his prayers. And then he... But then he ex explains, he said, everyone is bewildered by your illusory potency. Due to the, your illusory potency, we're all influenced by the concept of I and mine. We're thinking, I am this body and this is mine. And Akrura goes on to describe how he himself is guilty of this. He said, I identify with my family, my relatives, my wealth, my servants, my home. I'm thinking they're all mine, but they're all temporary. It's just a dream. They're not really mine, but this is my illusion. And this illusion is the potency of the Supreme Lord. So Akrura recognizes the problems which everyone faces in this material world, that we identify with things as being our own. We're thinking, first of all, the first mistake is to think, I am this body. And then the same, from that one mistake, we go on to make another big mistake. We're thinking, this is mine. This belongs to me. These are mine, my children, my family, my relatives. But this is all just a dream. It's not actually factual. So Akrura is explaining like this in his prayers to the Lord. And then he says that just like 
a, a, a river of water or a, a, a lake of water, it may be covered by some vegetation. And because it's covered by some leaves which have grown over the water, you don't realize there's water there. But you go looking for water where there's a mirage. It's not water at all. It's a mirage. But we're thinking there's water there. And in this way, Akura said the same way, he said, we're looking to, to other things instead of looking to Lord to Lord Vishnu, and instead of developing the love for Lord Vishnu, we're giving our love to so many things of the material world. We're giving our love to the mirage, to the illusion. And we're not seeing what is the reality, who is actually the reality. And so then Akrura then prays to the Lord that you please protect me. Please protect me from this. You are the Supreme Lord. I take shelter at your lotus feet. Please give me protection. So Akrura is the Acharya in offering prayers. We know there are nine processes of devotion. Nav Anga Bhakti, beginning with hearing and chanting and remembering. But Akrura is teaching us how to offer prayers to the Lord. It is said, by any one process, one can achieve perfection. Just like Sukadeva Goswami spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam. And simply by speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, he achieved perfection. Maharaj Parikshit simply heard Srimad Bhagavatam and he became perfect. Prahlad Maharaj was expert in remembering, in fixing the mind on the Lord. And simply by remembering, the Lord, he became perfect. Pritu Maharaj worshipped the Lord, and by worship, by his worship of the Lord, he achieved perfection. The goddess of fortune Lakshmi serves the lotus feet of the Lord, and achieved her perfection was in this way. Hanuman was the servant of the Lord. Arjuna was the friend of the Lord. Bali Maharaj surrendered everything to the Lord. And Akrura offered his prayers to the Lord. By praying to the Lord, we can also achieve perfection. So as members of our Krishna consciousness movement, praying is something which we do, which we are all doing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught everyone the importance of chanting the holy name. And we chant particularly the Maha Mantra, the 16 words of the Maha Mantra. The Maha Mantra is a prayer. We are praying, O Supreme Lord Krishna, O Supreme Energy of the Lord Hari, O Supreme Lord Rama, please engage me in your service. That is our constant prayer as devotees. Please engage me in your service. We want that ability, somehow that we can serve Krishna. Please give me the strength to serve you. Uh, but at the same time, the chanting of Hare Krishna mantra is the answer to our prayers. And so this is the wonder of the Mahamantra. 
that it's not only a prayer, but it's also the answer to the prayer, to our prayer. Because when we chant, we are engaging in service to the Lord. We were praying to the Lord, asking him for service. But at the same time, when we chant, it is the answer to our prayer. So in the most wonderful way, we're not just simply praying, but we're getting the answer to our prayer also in the chanting of the Holy Name. It is often said that of all the instructions given by the spiritual master, given by our founder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, the most important instruction is that we should regularly chant six, 16 rounds, a minimum of 16 rounds of the Holy Name. It is also said, though, that in the chanting of the Holy Name, all of the nine Angas of Bhakti are there. Because when we chant the Holy Name, we're not only chanting, but we want to also hear. And we want to also remember the Lord. In our chanting, when the chanting is done purely, then remembrance will also come. With first, first comes chanting. And then with chanting, we will hear. We start to hear. And when we hear nicely and chant nicely, we will remember. That remembrance will come. And then other processes of devotional service include worship of the Lord. By chanting the holy name, we are also worshiping the Lord. Lord Krishna is most pleased when we chant the holy name. He has said, Naham tishtani vaikunte yogi nam ridayeshuva tatra tishtani narada yatra gayanti madbhakta. The meaning being that Lord Krishna is saying that I am not in the vaikuntha. I am not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me. But I am wherever my devotees, my, my bhaktas, my devotees like Narada, where they are chanting my holy name. So we want to please Lord Krishna, chant his holy name. It is very pleasing to Krishna. It is also worship of Krishna. And it is also serving the lotus feet of Krishna when we chant the holy name in a humble state of mind. Then it is approaching the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. We are serving Krishna. We are giving service to Krishna by chanting his name. And we are able to surrender everything through the chanting of the Holy Name. So the chanting of the Holy Names is, includes all the nine Angas of Bhakti. Akrura offers prayers and he is showing us the, how to offer prayers to the Lord. Generally, the system is that when we offer a prayer to the Lord, First of all, there should be some glorification of the Lord. And Akrura has done that in his prayers. You know, just like you, maybe you have a child and your child wants something. They want to get something from you. And so when they're clever, they, they don't just come and say, I want this. They will come and say, oh, you're such a nice mother. Oh, I love you so much, mother. And then, you know, da, 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 you know, <laughs> a lot of glorification. And the mother's thinking, oh, my child loves me. And then the child said, I want, <laughs> you know, and the child will say what they want. I want the new handphone for myself, you know. 
<laughs> like this. And so in the same way, when we offer prayers, our prayers to the Lord, they should be done in a similar manner. Not that we just simply come and tell the Lord what we want, but there should be some glorification of the Lord. So Akrura has done that very nicely in his prayers. And he shows us how to worship the Lord, how to honor him. So Akrura has uh, he had this difficult job to do. He had to go there to Mathura and take Krishna, to Vrindavan rather, he had to go to Vrindavan and take Krishna out of Vrindavan. Now generally we say Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So how is it possible that Akrura could actually take Krishna out of Vrindavan? So the Acharyas explained to us that what actually happened was that Shamsundar Krishna stays there in Vrindavan and he hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. The gopis, they serve Krishna in the mood of separation. What, we, what the, it's called Vipralamba Seva. That in the, the mood of service in separation is greater than the mood of union with Krishna. Where there is some boga with Krishna, there is not so much appreciation. But when the separation is there, then one's attachment, one's longing for Krishna is greater. So Lord Krishna, by going away from Vrindavan, He's increasing the gopis' love for him. It's not that he's being cruel or unkind to the gopis, but rather he's giving them the chance to become more attached to him by separating himself from them. So Lord Krishna goes out of Vrindavan and Shamsundar Krishna actually stays there in Vrindavan, but the Vasudev Krishna goes with Akrura to Mathura. It's a Vasudev Krishna to go to Mathura. It's Vasudev Krishna who does the killing of the demons. Shamsundar Krishna is the form of Krishna who comes for the pleasure of his devotees. His devotees, like the gopis and Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. But the demons who have to be killed by Krishna, this is Vasudev Krishna. There are two, two forms of Krishna, you see. The original form of Krishna, the complete form is Shamsundar Krishna. And Vasudev Krishna is the expansion from the Shamsundar form. The child who appeared in Mathura to Vasudev and Devaki, that was Vasudev Krishna. Vasudev Krishna appears in the forearm form. And therefore, Vasudev and Devaki, they also offer prayers when their child is born. They are seeing the Lord in his forearm form and they worship him and offer prayers. But the child who is born to Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, that is Shamsundar Krishna. That is, you don't see Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj offering prayers to Krishna. They have a different rasa. Vasudev and Devaki, their mood is worshipping the Lord with great reverence. Aishwarya, the mood of Mathura, is more Aishwarya, but the mood of Vrindavan is sweetness, Madhurya. In the Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Krishna does, Kaviraj Goswami has written that Krishna is perfect in Dwarka. He is more perfect in Mathura and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. So it's in Vrindavan 
where Lord Krishna displays his most intimate pastimes with his devotees. And he appears there as Shamsundar Krishna, where he enjoys the love, the pure love of his devotees. The Vasudeva and Devaki, they also love Krishna, they also have pure love for Krishna, but it's of a different degree. It's mixed with awe and reverence because Krishna has come in his forearm form, fully dressed with all ornaments and so on. But in Vrindavan, Krishna's just a cowherd boy, plays the flute, peacock feathers in his hair, covered with the dust of Vrindavan. It's a different mood. So in Vrindavan, it's all sweetness. And that sweetness, where there is sweetness, there, if there's opulence, then it, will, it won't be so sweet. Just like you may go to someone's home, they may be very wealthy, they have a very opulent mansion, you know, so you're, oh, you know, it, it, you're afraid to touch anything because, you know, <laughs> everything looks so neat and so, uh, but it's so opulent that there's no real feeling of home. You know, it's not like home anymore because it's just like a palace. You go in a palace, you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel relaxed. But there is so much opulence. So that is the effect of opulence that it takes away the sweetness which is there in the in the rural atmosphere, in the countryside, in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, we see the perfection of this sweetness. How all the people, the gopis, the cowherd men, how they live together and how they all love Krishna. And they, they love the cows also. They're taking care of the cows and they're taking and they just love Krishna. So that sweetness, that is something which we all long for. We want that, that peace, that sweetness, that is actually there with Krishna in the spiritual world. Just like Akrura said, that we are looking for love in the mirage, in the illusion of the material world. The real love is there with Krishna. Sometimes Prabhupada would say there's no love in the material world. There's lust. But love means to Krishna. It's Krishna who we love. We don't love the illusion. We don't love the dream. But we often make the mistake of thinking that's what we love. So to come out of the dream, this is Krishna consciousness. We have to revive our Krishna consciousness. We have to chant. We have to hear about Krishna. And gradually, gradually, we get our intelligence back. We get our memory back. Just like if you get a bump on the head. Sometimes you hit your head so hard, you lose the memory. And you can't, you, you don't know anything, you can't recognize anyone, you don't know your name, you don't know what happened. Sometimes people, you know, they may have health problems, they go in a coma, they're in a coma for a long time, they come out of the coma, they forget everything. They don't know who they are, what happened. All has to be introduced to them again. So we're like that in this material world. We're all like coma patients, you see. We've forgotten our identity as spirit souls. We've forgotten our relationship with Lord Krishna. We have to come to the temple, we have to stand in front of the altar, and we have to hear, this is Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord, and we are his tiny servants. 
and by serving Krishna and by hearing about Krishna, gradually, gradually, we will get our memory back. We will understand our actual identity as spiritual beings. We all have an eternal relationship with Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say, Jibar Swarupahai Nitya Krishna Das. Yes, we are Nitya Das. We are eternally the servants of Krishna. But we have also some Ras also there with Krishna. Each of every one of us have some rasa with Krishna. It may be in servitude, it may be in fraternity, it may be in conjugal love, whatever it may be. They're different rasas. But we have some rasa with Krishna. First, we have to understand that we are servants of Krishna. To be the servant, that is the first thing. He is the master and we are the servants. As a master, everything belongs to him. Everything is meant for his pleasure. This is described for us in the Bhagavad Gita. In the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives us the peace formula. Bhoktaram yakna tapasham sarva loka maheshwaram Suridam sarva bhutanam gyadva mam shantim rishati. We want peace. You want to be happy? First you have to be peaceful. Then you can be happy. Without peace there's no possibility of happiness. So the formula for peace is to understand that everything belongs to Krishna. And that Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. And he is also our very best friend. We have had many friends in the world. They come and go. Yeah. Different, you know, maybe you're working in one job, then you change your job, you get different friends, right? Before you're married, you have friends. After you're married, you get different friends. <laughs> friends come and go. You're in school, you have friends, and you go to college, different friends. It's all changed, friends. But that one friend who is always with us, Lord Krishna, <coughs> we've forgotten him. So coming to Krishna consciousness is to establish our relationship with Lord Krishna. And we can do that by regularly hearing and chanting, by regularly coming and taking part in the programs, and naturally, we will awaken our true consciousness. All right. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll take some questions. Anybody has any questions or doubts? Anything like to ask? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much for your So there's a one point that Krishna never needs to so, like we also see the pastor later in the movies, one show Guru Kshetra, and like we also Rathiyatra pastor is there. So, that's like bringing back Krishna. So, but technically, if we understand, is it Vasudev Krishna? So, could you please explain like uh, technicalities of this pastime with Vasudev Krishna and original Krishna? Yes, well, you. Pretty much mentioned that you've mentioned it as we said, uh, Krishna came to Kurukshetra, so he's coming from Dwarka. So, Dwarkadish, you can say Dwarkadish Krishna, Vasudev Krishna, he's coming from Dwarka with all of his wives, and he's coming to meet the gopis. And the gopis came to meet Krishna, and the gopis came to meet Krishna, but they saw that the Krishna is not the same, right. The Krishna they know is a different Krishna because they know Krishna from Vrindavan and now they're seeing Krishna, Vasudev Krishna. Of course, Krishna had gone to Dwarka, he'd married and so many things. And so he's coming from Dwarka and he's got, you know, the clothes of the prince. It's not like he's a cowherd boy anymore. Before he was a simple cowherd boy in a simple dress. 
just like you come from the village, and then you go to work, work in Bangalore, you know, <laughs> and you, you go back to your village after you've been living in Bangalore for a few years, you know, and, you know, <laughs> and the people will say, oh, you look so different, yeah, you know. <laughs> so it, in the same way it happened to Lord Krishna, you know, he went to Dwarka, and he came back from Dwarka, he came from Dwarka to Kurukshetra, and the gopis were coming from Vrindavan and they saw Lord Krishna and they're not so pleased. And, and Kurukshetra is also not Vrindavan. The mood is not the same. And Kurukshetra, there were military everywhere, the soldiers everywhere, the elephants, the chariots. It wasn't like in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, there's the Yamuna River and Govardhan Hill and the peacocks and the parrots and so on. But Kurukshetra, the mood is very different. So the gopis saw Krishna and they wanted to bring him to Vrindavan, as you said. Yeah, they want the, the Rati Atra, the mood of Rati Atra. Prabhupada said Kurukshetra is important for two things. One is the speaking of Bhagavad Gita and the other is for Rati Atra. Because the first Rati Atra took place there. In the fact that the, the gopis, when they met with Krishna there at Kurukshetra, they have the mode of bringing him back to Vrindavan. So that was the original Rati Atra, to bring Krishna to Vrindavan. So Krishna came, Vasudev Krishna came, and the gopis, the gopis, they want Shamsundar Krishna, they don't want Vasudev Krishna. And so they're thinking, we'll bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. And so they, <laughs> when they go back to Vrindavan, then it's Shamsundar Krishna. Then it's no longer Vasudev Krishna. And so the gopis, they, the gopis, they just, they, they don't, they're not interested in Krishna being a prince. They're not interested in the opulence of Dwarka. It doesn't mean anything to the gopis. They just simply want Krishna. They like, they love Krishna as a cowherd boy. They love him playing the flute. They like to see him decorated with peacock feathers and with the different flowers from the forest of Vrindavan. They don't like to see him in all this opulence of the Prince of Dwarka. That is not what aspires and, and attracts the mind of the gopis. So the gopis, although they came to meet Krishna, that Krishna was not able to satisfy their desires. So then they brought him to Vrindavan. And then they can feel happy. Then they can feel satisfied. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would always perform Ratiatra in that mood, the mood of bringing Krishna, Lord Jagannath would come out of the main temple and they would take him to Gundicha, the Gundicha temple, which is down the road from the Vrinda, from the Jagannath Puri temple, a few kilometers down the road. So Gundicha represents Vrindavan. Gundicha is also the heart. So bringing Krishna to Vrindavan. Yes. One more continuing question, Madam, because that we also see the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna in Kurukshetra goes and discussing with Gopis. He has his personal uh, discussion also. So <laughs> does that mean that Gopis will still not be satisfied with Vasudev Krishna there, or how does? Their interaction because they have more intimate discussion with Krishna. They have more intimate discussions with Krishna. Oh, so, what, what's your problem? What you're concerned with? Uh, so, like, because they are completely affected by the original from the Supreme Lord, so how does their conversation, uh, like, will that satisfy Gopis completely or still it will not satisfy them? Well, Krishna satisfies them when he goes to Vrindavan. Without going to Vrindavan, they, they won't be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah, they couldn't be satisfied in Kurukshetra. 
And they, they don't want Krishna to be there in Kurukshetra either. They want to bring him to Vrindavan. Yes, well, you have to understand based on scriptural reference in this in the scriptures we're told that Krishna Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. In the third chapter of the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is called the Bhagavat Purana, and it's the mature contribution of Srila Vyasadeva. And in that Srimad Bhagavatam, third chapter, uh, Srila Vyasadeva, well, it's actually Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami is the narrator, and Sutta Goswami was narrating the different incarnations of Lord Krishna. He was narrating all the different avatars. And he narrated the, you see, the Vishnu avatars, they're the Purusha avatars. They're Purusha avatars. So you have, there are three. There's Mahavishnu or Karana Dakashai Vishnu, Garpo Dakashai Vishnu, and Shiro Dakashai Vishnu. They're all Vishnu, but they're doing different functions. You have Mahavishnu or Karana Dakashai Vishnu, who is in the causal ocean. And from the, from the causal ocean, from the body of Mahavishnu, the universes are coming out. <clears throat> so he's the original cause of creation, you see. But then he expands himself into each universe as Garbo Dakashai Vishnu. Garbo Dakashai Vishnu, in the Garbo. The, the Garbo Ocean, the Garbo Duck Ocean is the bottom half of the universe. In every universe, there's an ocean in the bottom of each universe. The universes have come out of the body of Mahavishnu, just like sweat or perspiration comes out of our body. So from the body of Mahavishnu, the universes are emanating from his body. And then Lord Vishnu expands into each of these different universes. That's Garbo Dakashai Vishnu. And then Lord Vishnu then expands himself further as Shiro Dakashai Vishnu, who is also the Paramatma in the heart of all living entities. So in this way, Vishnu is Parusha avatar, you see. But who is it? where does this Vishnu come from? You see, the Vishnu, he is the expansion from Lord Krishna. And this is described in Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma's prayers. And he has realized this. He's seen all this. That Lord Krishna is the original Lord. And then Rupa Goswami, one of the direct disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's analyzed the different qualities of the different uh, forms of the Lord. And he explains that Although the Lord, Lord Krishna himself, is an ocean of unlimited qualities, he selected some 64 qualities, 64 qualities. Now, from these 64 qualities which are fully present in Lord Krishna, he explains that a living entity like us, we are considered jivas, we can only have in our perfect, in our most perfect condition, we could have 50 out of 64 qualities. Now, on a higher level, Lord Shiva, he can have 55 qualities out of the 64. And Lord Vishnu, he can have 60 out of the 64 qualities. Lord Vishnu, there are four qualities which are unique to Krishna, which are not found in Lord Vishnu. First of all, Lord Krishna's flute playing. Venu Madhurya. Lord Krishna's flute playing attracts living entities all over the creation. Second quality is uh, Rup Madhurya, the beauty of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is so beautiful that even Lord Vishnu aspires to see Lord Krishna. Even Mahavishnu wants to see the form of Lord Krishna. It's so attractive. 
and then also uh, Ma uh, Rupa Madhurya, Lila Madhurya, wonderful pastimes. Lord Krishna performs the most amazing pastimes, which attract living entities everywhere. Pastimes like Rasa Lila. These are unique to Krishna. And then one more, Prima Madhurya, that Lord Krishna is always with his associates. So these are four qualities which are unique to Krishna, which are not even found in Lord Vishnu. And as I said, Lord Vishnu, he wants to see Lord Krishna. He aspires to see Lord. And there's a pastime which depicts this. There was one Brahmana who his wife was delivering children, but she kept on having a miscarriage. So the Brahmana came to complain. To, he came to Dwarka to complain to the ruler of Dwarka that you're supposed to protect my wife. She's giving birth and she's having a miscarriage. You should be protecting her. It's your fault. You're responsible. And so at that time, Arjuna was present and Arjuna was very concerned to hear the honor of the Kshatriyas diminished. So Arjuna vowed, he said, next time your wife has a child, I will be there and I will protect the child and I will make sure your child is delivered. And so then it happened that the, wife, the Brahmana's wife again conceived a child and she's ready to give birth. And Arjuna was there trying to protect and make sure nothing bad happened, but still the child was a miscarriage. And so the Brahmana was very upset and it was a very big problem for Arjuna because Ar Arjuna vowed he would give up his life if he could not protect the child. So well, then Lord Krishna came there and Lord Krishna told Arjuna, look, you come with me, I'll solve, we'll solve this problem. And Lord Krishna took Arjuna on his chariot and they went through the covering of the universe and they went into the Kosho Ocean and they went to where Mahavishnu was residing. And they saw that Mahavishnu was there, laying on the Kosho ocean, and beside him were all the children of the Brahmana. That Lord Mahavishnu had been stealing all the children of the wife's Brahmana. He'd been stealing them. Why? Just so that he could meet with Arjuna and Krishna. So that even Mahavishnu wants to see the form of Lord Krishna. And also, when we talk about rasa, when we talk about Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu is worshipped with Aishwarya, with awe and veneration, because Lord Vishnu is so huge, and he has four arms, and he's so majestic, you know, that you're just filled with awe and reverence. And when Lord Vish when Vasudev Krishna appeared to Vasudev and Devaki, they offered prayers. So with Lord Vishnu also, it's going to be Dasyaras. There's not going to be real friendship there, a little bit of friendship, but it's not going to be like Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna enjoys all the rasas. He enjoys, for example, the cowherd boys are climbing on his back and they're playing with him and wrestling with him. And he's in, Lord Krishna is sometimes even being defeated by the cowherd boys in wrestling matches. And Lord Krishna has his parents, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, how they are chastising Krishna because Krishna said a little child and Mother Yashoda can bind up Krishna as she does in Damodara Leela. And then you have also this Madhurya Rasa. So these things are not there with Lord Vishnu. Even the goddess of fortune, you don't read about her Madhurya Ras with Narayan. You know, she's on the chest of the Lord, but it's all, she's more serving his lotus feet. Different Rasa. The Rasas are much greater with Krishna. With Vishnu, you don't get the same extent of Ras. That's why we say Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, and from him comes Lord Vishnu. <laughs> Next one. Mm -hmm. What is one question online? So well, man here has a question. We'll take his question for.
I'm heading to this just one. It's all one God. The just names are different, functions are different, but it's the same Vishnu. It's, it's the same Vishnu. So one wish is a Mahavishnu. Maha well, it's a, they're the same Mahavishnu, Garbhadakshai Vishnu, Shiradakshai Vishnu. They're the same, just the location is different. If it's in the Kajal Ocean, then it's Mahavishnu. If he's in the Garbhadaka Ocean, then it's Garbhadaka Vishnu. If he's in Sweda Dweep, then it's Shiradaka Shai Vishnu. But it's always Vishnu. Just like Paramatma, you know, how many Paramatmas are in this room? There's one Paramatma, right? Yeah. One Paramatma expanded everywhere. So Vishnu is one. But it, different functions, many different functions. Yes. Yoti Sachi Madhari is writing this. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept normal obeisances. Did the gopis know that Krishna in Vrindavan is Shamasundar Krishna and in Dwarka he is Vasudev? And there are two different Krishnas. Did the gopis know this? Well, Yoga Maya is there, you see. The Yoga Maya is there to allow the pastimes. Krishna arranges this the covering of the minds of his devotees to, to allow more pastimes. So the gopis, they, they may know, they may not. They, 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 and certainly they go to Kurukshetra, they don't think, oh, we're only seeing Vasudev Krishna. They're all thinking we're going to see Krishna. It's one Krishna, but he's appearing in different ways, in different devotees. It's not that it's a different Krishna, but it's one Krishna, but he just <clears throat> reciprocating with his devotees in different ways. So the gopis went there. They were thinking Krishna. They were not thinking of that. They don't make any distinction. Shamsundra Krishna, Vasudeva Krishna. They just know Krishna. And they know Krishna as the cowherd boy, as the son of Nanda Maharaj. So when they went there and they saw him, the mood is not the same. So then they saw it changed. Just like you come to Bangalore, you go back, you're not the same, right? You're still the same, but <laughs> a little different. So Krishna, it's the same Krishna, but some different mood. So gopis prefer the mood in Vrindavan. Yes. Thank you for the Nectarian lecture. Maharaj, uh, as you nicely mentioned about the different qualities, uh, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and then uh, Krishna. Worshipping wise, Maharaj, when we go to different temples, we go to Vishnu temple or we go to Krishna temple, then uh, it is said that yeah, we should of, I mean, respect uh, Sushiva and Vishnu also has lesser qualities than Krishna. Then there in Vishnu temple, should we be worshipping or respecting? What should be our mood? While Krishna is the ultimate, we should be worshipping for sure. Yes, well, our mood should be offering respects to these different personalities. At the same time, we can offer our respects according to their position. For example, we worship Lord Nishringadev. Lord Nishringadev is also Vishnu. And so when we worship Lord Nishringadev, what is our mood in offering worship to Lord Nishringadev? We consider him to be the, the, the avatar of Krishna, but certainly we, we give so much devotion. Many people have a lot of devotion for Lord Nishringadev. They're very attracted to Lord Nishringadev. It's very appealing to people. And so we offer a respectful basins and we offer our prayers and so on as we've been taught by Prabhupada. We chant the Shiva Stotra and so on. What should be our mood? Our mood is to submit ourselves. We can pray 
for example, to Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva being a, the greatest Vaishnava, but at the same time he's also Guna Avatar, he's an expansion of the Lord. We can pray to him in different ways. We could pray to him, please engage me in, please help me to be a devotee as you're a great devotee, as you serve people, as you serve Lord Krishna, help me also to serve Lord Krishna. We can have a prayer like that, that please help me to overcome the obstacles in the path of devotional service. Lord Shiva is the master of Ahankar. We can ask Lord Shiva, please help me to get rid of my Ahankar, my false ego, which is obstructing my devotion to Krishna. You are the controller. Please do this. When we go to the Holy Dham, we go to Shitrapal Shiva. We pray to Lord Shiva, please give us admission into the Holy Dham to see the place where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Lord Krishna performed their pastimes. So according to the different situations, we will pray. Pray to Lord Shiva, pray to uh, Lord Nishingadev, pray to, yeah, we, we, we will always want, want, to, want to pray, please, Help me in my devotional service. Give me your mercy. Give me your blessings. Help me to destroy the obstacles in the path of devotion. Prahlad Maharaj in the fifth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Prahlad Maharaj in the residence of Hari Varsha, they're praying to Lord Nishringadev. Kindly vanquish our demonic like desires for fruitive activities. Please appear in our hearts, drive away our ignorance, so we might become fearless in our struggle for existence in the material world. So Prahlad Maharaj is praying like that. Generally, I, I mean, I myself, I like to follow the prayers which are given by others, by the other Acharyas. So Prahlad Maharaj is praying like that. We can use that prayer to pray to Lord Nishingadev. Yeah. Like I want to know like how you first met to and first meeting with him, and what was his mood? Meet with Prabhupada. Yes. Yeah. Well, you have to understand that. You know, when I met, when Prabhupada came to the temple, I was in the temple, I was living in the temple, I was one of the devotees, I was a very young devotee. You know, I was very young and I was very new to Krishna consciousness. I really didn't know anything and Prabhupada came. So I just tried to hear from Prabhupada. You know, Prabhupada came, he was like, you know, already mid-70s, elderly. And I'm 21 or 22, like, and you know, I'm a very young person. I've just been in Krishna consciousness a few months. So, you know, what could I say to Prabhupada? You know, so, so I just tried to offer my respects. And if there was any service to be done, then I tried to do whatever Prabhupada wanted. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the context of today, when uh, we know that okay, Akhanura already knew the positions of Lord Krishna and Balram, but once when he was actually in the bank of the Yamuna and when he had gone for bathing, and that time when he saw Krishna and Balram within the Yamuna, he was bewildered. Uh, so I just wanted to know, although he knew the positions of them as they were the supreme personality, why did the, that incident actually cause Akhanura to go into bewilderment? Well, I wouldn't say he went into bewilderment, but rather it was very joyful. Akrur became very joyful when he saw the Lord there in his form as Ananta Shesha with the, the personality of Godhead and all of his associates, his eternal associates in the spiritual world. Akrur was so joyful it, and that he offered his prayers it, with, with great joy. And actually what happened was when he went back to the chariot, then Lord Krishna could see Akrura and they saw that, you know, he walked. Well, and they said to him, what happened there, Akrura? Did you, did, did you see something wonderful there? <laughs> did 
did, did you see something wonderful in the air or on the land or in the water? And Akrura said to Lord Krishna, he said, my Lord, for one who has seen you, they've seen everything which is wonderful on the land, in the air or in the water, because everything is coming from you. And for one who's seen you, there's nothing more wonderful to see. Once you've seen Krishna, then there's nothing else left to see. You've seen everything. So that was a cruelest mood after, you know, it, it was a, it wasn't bewildering. It was a joyful experience. Hmm? Yes? Uh, Maharaj, uh, I have a question. It's troubling me. Uh, so we see in this today's world that there's so much of uh, chaos going on. There's war, there's uh, these camps and uh, it, it troubles me a lot. Uh, so how do I uh, I continue my bhakti even in this chaotic situation? And how do you know um, uh, I I can do some service uh, you know benefit this world by my bhakti? So I have uh, this question keeps coming up in my mind. Well, we have to understand we're in the material world. This is a place of misery. There, are, there is going to be constant upheavals here in this world. And we have to expect that. But we have to understand also this is not our real home. And all of these things, things like wars and all the crises which come in the world, they're there just to tell us, to let us know this is not a place for any gentleman. Right? Prabhupada would say to us, he said, that, uh, it's just like you go in a public toilet, you know? You, you don't loiter there. Just simply do your business and get out, you know? So we come to this material world. Just do what's required and get out, you know? We should just want to put all of our energy and enthusiasm and dedicate into getting out from this world. Right? Don't come back. You know, we have that book, The Science of Reincarnation, Coming Back, and the last chapter is called Don't Come Back. <laughs> <laughs> because for, you come back for sure, there will be only more problems. You're not going to solve all the problems of this place. There's going to be more and more problems. As Kali Yuga goes on, so better we just go back to Krishna. One of our devotee ladies, one time I was there in New York, one of our devotee ladies, she had some illness and she knew she was leaving the body. And she said to Srila Prabhupada, she says, Srila Prabhupada, I just want to come back and distribute your books. But Prabhupada said to her, he said, that's okay, you just go back to God. <laughs> you don't need to come back just to distribute books, just go back to God. Okay, so you, you don't have to worry, just go back to God. <laughs> yes? Okay. Well, that's, uh, I think the next program. So. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, to go. All right. So thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada.
teaching by organizing it nicely. So we request all of you to please volunteer. Uh, Karthik Prabhu every day sends these messages that how many days are left. And I said yesterday that it raises my blood pressure higher that days are decreasing. <laughs> and we have to arrange more and more things. Uh, so here, uh, today message says that we have 12 days to go. Right? So request everyone to come up. Uh, all of you have really contributed a lot. Uh, but there is no no cap to our salary increment, right? We always want more and more salary increments. Similarly, Krishna also wants more and more, uh, you know. Uh, so Maharaj is leaving us. Uh, he's going for other programs. So we we'll chant again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So... We request all of you to come forward. Uh, you know, we have given receipt books to many devotees to please uh, collect more more donation from your friends, colleagues, corporate friends. Yesterday, someone was asking me how should we should collect donation from corporate. So you need to be a little careful. We have to be practical um, because some some of the companies do have their you know ethical guidelines that they should not be doing religious things. So incorporate one also only from your friends. I don't go all out and risk your jobs and all. And we have to be careful. But yeah, you can go shop to shop from friends, relatives. Uh, please ask them. And don't don't become like uh, too pushy to anyone. Right? We have to be respectful. Uh, we we primarily want them to come to our program and participate in different things like kids' competition, cultural events are there. Uh, and uh, you know, park and stuff. So everyone has a, a flavor to enjoy there uh, with different stalls there. Then you know, deity worship is there. Abhishek, Kampush, Abhishek, Archana is there. So you know, everyone has something to relish there. Um, and then finally, there will be prashadam. You know, different um, delicious prashadam. So request all of you to please come forward and support us. Uh, today we will be going uh, for promotion activities. There will be a Nagar Sankirtan starting at IBC at 6 p.m. And uh, there are also some other devotees going to different places like I think so Vaishnavi Forum will be going to Marathali Bridge. Um, so if you want, uh, you know, we can all spread out. There is a group also going to DMART uh, with Narsima Prabhu because yesterday we had a really great uh, Saturday. Uh, we distributed almost 2,500 pamphlets in the evening itself. And Mataji also went uh, during the daytime to some other places and we distributed another 1,000. So yesterday, I think, so we distrib distributed almost 3,000, 4,000 pamphlets, which was a big, uh, you know, thanks to all the volunteers who are supporting. We are also placing the uh, A4 size glossy pamphlets of our Janmasmi in apartments. So if any one of you are living in different apartments uh, where we can place them the notice board to get attention of the residents there, then please come forward and ask us. And we will, you know, we had printed almost 100 uh, and I am just left with two of them. So almost 98 have already gone. So we'll be printing today again 100. And, you know, we want to spread it to everyone in this area that we are celebrating Janvasmi and we want to welcome all of them. So I request you to do that. We also have VIP uh, invitation cards. So if, for example, uh, an apartment which is sort of 100 flats, or if you know someone who is a very important dignity, you know, we, we can, you, we give that VIP card to you. You know, you can go and invite them personally. Make sure that when they come, they are also, you know, welcomed by someone. And they will give them a possibility to do archana or something, you know, if Abhishek is going on or some special prashadam, right? So we have to basically welcome everyone, respect them and make them feel at home. And which is how they are going to take Krishna consciousness. That is the main aim. You know, aim is not to get money and not to get their attention or something. Main aim is then for us is for them to come closer to Krishna. They can transform their lives. You should always keep this one thing in mind, you know, that our aim is to help them. Right? Don't feel that, you know, it is just to ask money or just to get, get them in. Always remember. So you have also, always have to be very courteous, very loving, very caring, very respectful. Right? That should be our aim. Okay. Any other announcement anyone wants to have?
anything any leaders who want to uh, announce anything. Okay. So with that, now we move on to our next program, which is Nasi Mahati, and thereafter they will be sure I'm sorry. Thank you. Namaste Narasimhaya Thank <laughs> you. 